Hi, my name is Sherry McKean and this is Cross Pose, a place where magical people meet. And this is going to be your October 2018 horoscope for the Native American Zodiac. So, this is the Native American Zodiac. Um, we start out with the sun and the crow. This is... The crow, crows are dazzling, okay? I have a real good friend that's a crow, and they're just dazzling. They're attractive, they're influential. When the sun is in the season of the crow, <coughs> um, people get along better. <laughs> By the 23rd, the sun moves into the snake. Um, around that time, uh, the sun will be opposite the planet Uranus, which brings, um, in opposition usually brings chaos, the planet of chaos, in through another person or an outside influence, especially with Uranus, it could be just an outside influence that's not a particular person, it could be an organization or something. Usually there's some sort of uh, interesting thing going on when there's an opposition like that. So that's on the 23rd of October, right when the sun is moving into a new season of, of the snake. And this, the snake energy is a lot different. Um, keep in mind that <coughs> even little baby snakes can bite, <laughs> okay? Um, they're the helper and the healer, too, but um, a snake kind of tastes things with its tongue, and it doesn't make a lot of noise, so... It, if you think about a, a snake totem is sort of tasting the truth all the time and um, if they want to um, be um, in a different vibe or if they want to just be in a different environment, boom, they're gone. Just like that. <laughs> the way a snake, it just darts away, gone. As soon as they decide, it's it, it's over. Just by tasting things and getting a feel or a vibe for things. The moon, the new moon's on the ninth in the crow. Um, this um, is, a, a crow is loyal to their groups. They tend to be a social kind of creature, so, um, but they're also loyal to their household. Um, they're traditionally um, thought to bring game or to keep game away. So there was a balancing there of being um, pleasing to the totem, yet being wary that um, there can be an out of balance situation with the crow. And um, that's kind of one of the unique things about the crow is that it's best to maintain a balance there. Um, but uh, by the 24th, the moon is full in the beaver. Um, the beaver is over here. Um, this is a time when uh, things are coming to a, um, probably a culmination in some material way. This tends to be more of a material sign. Um, Full moons are often a time when you can clearly see the end of a project, if not the project actually ending, you can clearly see the end of it. And this is a, a real earthy kind of totem, so more or less it's probably more earthy type projects. Mercury starts in the crow, but it's just buzzing along. So Mercury is very peaceful in the crow. They get along good. By the 10th, already into the snake quick, secretive, transforming Mercury by the 31st, already into the owl. Um, the owl has few, few natural enemies. Um, this, an owl is a lot more introspective. By the 31st of the month, this Mercury thinks a lot more. Um, it isn't always just darting around all the time so much. So, um, you might notice that by the end of the month, um, thoughts start to solidify and crystallize a little bit better. Uh, Venus starts in the snake. And Venus is about to go through this whole retrograde thing where it 
looks like it's kind of doing a loop in the sky. It looks like it's going backwards and blah, blah, blah. The snake is kind of a loopy kind of, <laughs> a loopy kind of totem, you might say. So, uh, um, this is a, a time when uh, Venus, the planet of love, is kind of like winding its way and weaving and kind of tying itself in knots. And once it goes retrograde on the 5th, it's going to be like, ooh-wee. Um, you're really going to, after it goes retrograde, you want to listen here. Snakes don't make any noise. They listen. They taste the air. After, in this season of Venus retrograde in the snake, I would say you will be attracting a lot more with this attractiveness of Venus if you listen. That's my key message. <laughs> Mars in the otter. Powers of perception. The otter. He is awesome. He, um, he can make sounds that travel for a mile and he uses tools. I mean, like, that's like the coolest animal ever, you know. So once Mars is going good now that it's, um, moving along um, towards uh, deeper territory here um, and it's about to go into uh, more of a kind of even keel you might say in the otter. Otter is fixed and that's kind of um, kind of satisfactory for Mars. Uh, I have down the powers of perception but those perceptions are applied to things. The otter is great at applying what he knows. And it's, he's like the little mechanic of, of the zodiac. <laughs> um, funny, almost every mechanic I've ever known has been a Leo or a, an Aquarius. They're very mechanically inclined, I guess, to fix signs. Jupiter, another snake with Venus and, and the, the sun by the end of the month. And um, Mercury's been through the snake in the middle of the month. So lucky Jupiter and the snake. Um, very sensitive to the voice of the spirit because they don't make much sound. They're very sensitive to hearing things. So this lucky Jupiter is... Um, got a patience about it that's um, capable actually the luck of this kind of Jupiter and the snake is a, a patience of being able to improve almost any situation they come upon um, they, they just have a knack of that and, and they have this uh, sense of, of knowing which way to go uh, once they're in the thick of it Saturn and the goose. Um, the goose is a little tough right now with Saturn because Pluto's there and they're probably getting a little, need a little elbow room by now because they've both been there for quite a while. And uh, so I think the goose might be getting touchy with the Saturn. Be careful of being provoked into being manipulated into like somebody triggering you or pushing your buttons um, and the same with Pluto um, Pluto's about to go direct um, and Pluto really knows how to accomplish things though um, or Uranus is in the beaver I mentioned this with the Sun opposite um, hard work brings health and that opposite the Sun might mean you get healthy ideas from other people or other people might help you inspire to be more healthy because beaver definitely likes to be conscious of beauty and um, comforts and stuff so um, you might find unexpected things along that lines from other people in that opposition around the 23rd which is near the full right before the full moon Neptune and the wolf the funny thing about wolves, females are usually more aggressive than males. Um, so Neptune, this is, um, they, they do have a gentle, the, the female has a gentle potential. 
I like to say that, gentle potential. But um, wolves are nippy. They can be nippy, that's for sure, if they're in a bad mood. Need help staying steady when the wind is blowing, especially in the, um, the darkest part of the winter, which is um, the time, like the 12th house, 11th and 12th house, right before um, the wolf's birthdays. Um, this is a time when the, the, they need to be coaxed and reassured a little bit more coming into this winter season. And healing, usually they heal others and others heal them, and it's more of a mutual healing. Um, so they're, they're also, this Neptune, um, definitely in the wolf is more um, artistic and spiritual. I would say more aware of artistic purity and spiritual purity. So this is a, a, a season when the wolf is probably um, going to be a little more introspective and moody, you might say. Uh, especially coming up to the sun coming into the, the wolf, which is kind of the end of the whole zodiac. So it's kind of a moody sign, you might say. So then Pluto and the goose, like I was saying, the goose, uh, there's, they've been in, Pluto and Saturn have been in the goose together. And they're, I think they're getting a little too, you know, tired of each other, I should say. And um, Pluto is kind of strong. I mean, it knows how to accomplish things. And uh, Pluto has the more suave ability of knowing how to act in the right company. Whereas Saturn is more like the chopping block, the guillotine, and not so much so. So um, Pluto, I kind of feel, is a little more upper hand. Ooh. And so that Saturn, it's upsetting Saturn, upsetting Saturn big time. So, yeah, be careful of, of being provoked into manipulation with that combination happening there. Um, major aspects... Um, this whole Saturn and Uranus and, and, and Venus, um, first is like 11th, you got Sun square Pluto, Oof, that's a little icky. On the 23rd, the Sun opposite Uranus that I had already talked about. The very next day on the full moon, you got Venus sextile Saturn, which might straighten things back out a little bit more. But then, boom, 26, you got the sun and retrograde Venus on that retrograde. That's the the uh, con the final conjunct of the Venus cycle when Venus is kind of like starting back all over again. So that is a crucial conjunct on the 26th. And... Um, Oh gosh, then Venus opposite Uranus, because they're all very close in degree on the 31st. That's the Venus and other people and a little bit of chaos. So the 31st might be the final kickoff of kind of all those little aspects adding up all month. So uh, be careful that on the 31st. Uh, if you think there might be any kind of fireworks, you might want to lay low a little bit. <laughs> So that's it for the month, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to bringing more videos.